So Trello. I've tried a lot of different online project management systems. None of them have worked for me nearly as well as Trello. Let me show you why. Where most project management systems have you create this really complex map or timeline that has all the different uh, things that you need to do and all the timelines, we call them like um, milestones along your timeline for your project. Trello is much more like a sort of fancy to-do list. So let me show you what, what I mean here. I'm going to create a new Trello. First of all, to create your account, just go to trello.com. And you can even use your Google username and password. You just link it to your Google account. And so then when you're logged into Gmail, you're automatically logged into Trello. You'll see next to my address bar here, there's a little Trello icon. I just did that as an extension. I went into my preferences and did a search for Trello and found that I could add it. I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. For now, let's create a new board. Let's start. So I'm going to click the plus sign and choose new board. I'm not going to worry about an organization right now. But let's call it ED113 Project. And I'll keep it private. You do have the option of making it public and you can collaborate. So if you were doing a project with three or four people, you could go ahead and make one Trello for everybody. I'm just going to do this one alone. All right, so I have a very basic Trello project set up with three boards. And on those boards, you'll see the option to add a card. Now to the right, I have a few other options. Most of these are only important for when you're collaborating. It does keep track of all the activity that you do. And you can also add members. And then you have a menu for some other things. Let's just hide that for now. I can always show that again by just coming over to show sidebar. Okay, so by default, I have to do, doing, and done. This might be all you need. So let's say to do, I need to create my wireframe. Add and it automatically gives me the next card ready for me to do something else. So I'll say um, design low resolution prototype, add, refine my prototype, add. Oh yeah, and I also need to uh, read book tied to projects. And what else do I need to do? Well, there's the book report prep. I think we're calling that a book review. Okay, so there's some to-do stuff. Now let's say that I put this together about a week ago. I created my wireframe. So now I'm just going to click that card and drag it into done because I've already created the wireframe. I'm working on my low resolution prototype right now so I'm going to put that in doing. And I'm also reading the book tied to my project although I still haven't reviewed it. But I really don't want to forget so refine my prototype that has a due date. So look at the little triangle. I'm going to click the triangle and set a due date because that's due Monday in class. Save. Now the book review also has a due date. That is the next Monday, which is April 14th. I can even put in a time, but for now I'm not going to worry about that too much. But what I might want to do, let's see, let's go back to due date. And do you see enable the calendar power up? It says you can get a calendar view of your cards and an iCal feed, although I think power up means I need to pay. Let's find out. So I'm going to click on that. Let's click on calendar. No, that's really cool. So it means now I have a calendar view of anything that I've put due dates on. I really like that. And 
I should also be able to, in my settings, link that calendar to my Google Calendar, which would be really powerful. But let's not do that quite yet. So for now, just know that you can create cards very quickly. I'm going to add another card, which is register for ED113, because you all did that. And doesn't it feel good to have a few things that are done? I think so. Add. Um, so I can add a few more cards... Let's say um, daily PLN check-in, and then there's the weekly mind casting, and add that, but I think that's probably in doing because that's something that I'm actively doing on a daily basis as opposed to something that I need to plan to do later. So right here, it might not look so important to have a project management system. But when you're actually adding in all the things that you need to do, like maybe we also have uh, interviews for empathy map, and on and on and on and on and on. Now, I might want to add another list, so another one of these boards here. So let's say in addition to to do, doing, and done, I also have, I could keep track of my research right here. So research sources. And let's say that one of the books that I'm using is Turtles. Now let's see if there are any options to help me keep track of that book. Well, I can label it. Maybe I want a label to keep track of research as opposed to things that I'm doing. And it also looks like I can add attachments. And look, I can upload them from my computer, Google Drive, Dropbox, or a link. So I'm going to go to Turtles, Termites, and Traffic Jams. For now, I'm just going to link to the MIT Press page, since that's the publisher. Go back to Trello. Oops, Trello's open in this one. I'm going to paste in that link. Great, so now I have a link back. That could be really handy when you're doing research. Maybe you go to Amazon and you find all these great books. You could add them right into your Trello. And then you can comment on them right here. So maybe I'll say, um, oops. I like that it has spell check built in. You can see I need that. might be good to put any of the other information there that you would have when you're citing the book. Now hopefully you're using Delicious, and Delicious is keeping track of things as you're researches, researching it, but in Trello I can just kind of refine just the things that I need for my project, as opposed to everything that I discover. And so I can also move and copy, that's if I want to go between lists or boards. Um, but we, all, we haven't looked at checklist. I find this really useful, but not so much for a book. So I'm going to close this. And for read book tied to project, actually, let's go under book review prep. So I'm going to click once on that. And I want to create a checklist. So let's see um, things to bring. Let's say there are materials that I want to make sure to bring when I present my book in class. So the first thing is the book. I also want to bring poster board. Maybe I've got some big display that I'm going to do. Uh, yellow stickies that people can use to comment on my book board. And I will also bring chocolate because people tend to be a lot more forgiving with a bit of chocolate. And anything else? 
How about spare markers? And close that. Now let's see. So under book review prep, I now see the icon for checklist, and it's telling me that zero out of five of those checklist things are finished, and that it's due on April 14th. So now anytime I need to review that list or say, well, okay, the book is in my bag. I'm not going to worry about that. So I'll check that off. It's even telling me I'm 20% done. Pretty cool. Now what about for a more complicated project? I'm going to click on boards because I've created a lot of different Trello boards. One that I've created that I use frequently is my daily to-do. Now I just wanted to show you, so there's a lot more information here, including the things that I have to do for ED113. And what I really like is that I have the Trello app on my iPhone, and when I first open Trello on the iPhone, it will just show me one column, like that today column, which is really cool. And then I can just swoop over to tomorrow, to someday, to done, and what I like to do is, is take a screen capture of the today and make that my startup screen or my lock screen on the iPhone. So it's a really easy way for me to review the things that I need to get done before the end of the day. Now, why do I like using this format, today, tomorrow, someday, done, rather than having it on a calendar? Well, because a lot of the stuff that's on my today, I might not finish today. But everything will become tomorrow's today. So in other words, tomorrow, all this stuff that I didn't finish yesterday is now going to be today. Got it? Something like that. Let's go to boards again. Another thing that I like to do, notice I've set up one for Stanford D School Design. So the D School Design process was one of the processes we looked at several weeks ago. What I did was not only created a list for each of the steps, but I also put in a definition or like a description of what each of those is and used my own words. So for instance, with ideate, that's one word that I sometimes get caught up on. It's not one I use in my daily practice. So the definition that works for me for ideate is generating a wide range of design ideas, aka brainstorm. In fact, you'll notice prototype, I also use the word construct under test, share and revise, define, conceptualize, empathize, interview, because that's how I most likely am going to be interviewed. And then I can just add cards right onto each of these for the things either that I need to do in those steps or the things that I've done in those steps. So I can use it initially for a planning tool and also to help keep me on track in terms of the structure, but then I have it as a record after I've finished the project. Or in my case, it's a way that I'm visualizing my process for you, my students. Let's go to back to boards, too, and I just wanted to show you one other one. So Star Logo Nova is the software that I work on at MIT. And I can, as soon as I opened this, I thought, oh, man, I haven't updated this in a few weeks. I need to add a few more things. But you'll see I have added. So I have new ideas beside to do. This is where I can put things, this is like my brainstorming column, new ideas, things that I'll add, and then I'll figure out, okay, is that something I need to do? Or maybe it's an obstacle. So I added this obstacle column between process and finished, because sometimes I want to keep track of the things that are keeping me from, from accomplishing what I want to do. And unfortunately, that happens fairly frequently at MIT. There are obstacles, and sometimes it's helpful just to, to kind of have those right on the board, especially if I'm collaborating with people or my supervisor is reviewing this. Then he can say, oh, wow, I didn't know about one of those obstacles. And yeah, I created that other obstacle. Not much I can do about that. And then you always want to have your finished column just so you have that feeling of accomplishment. So anyway, that is a rapid introduction to Trello. And hopefully I catered it enough to your project process in ED113 that you can jump right in and start using it, uh, but also suggested ways that you might use it beyond the class. And so it, it could, like for me, be a daily use tool. So go out there, use Trello, get those milestones, get to class, and make sure that your project rocks. Thanks.